right, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to our David's Deep Dive. Every week I come to you live here through uh, our live Zoom event. And if you are here live on Zoom, thank you. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please, please subscribe to this event by clicking on the link in the original post so that you can get updated on the updated DDDs, get the replays, but more importantly, so you can ask your questions. Because here, if you're live, in the room here on Zoom, you get to actually ask questions and interact. I don't check the Facebook posts until later in the day. So if you have questions or need anything, please come and join us on Zoom. So welcome. If you can hear me out there, say hello, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this, please uh, comment in the chat box so I know people can hear me and you are here and we are alive. <laughs> I'm looking for some chats. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning. Awesome. All right. So my name is David. I'm the chief economy builder. I love this because this was such a good token or a good change of, of interaction that I came up with recently. Because honestly, what I like to do is every everything I, I work towards every every day I work towards one thing, and that's to build my own economy. And I hope you can build your own. And so the topics that I cover through the David's Deep Dive are typically related to things in leadership, things in business, things in your personal lives that help to improve the quality of your life, which then in turn creates and develops your own economy. So this presentation is called Who's the Boss? The Unspoken Actions of a Real Boss. Now, I want you to know that this presentation is really for anybody who has or wants to lead people. Anybody who wants to or is in the per current process of leading people. This is important to understand because many of you either fit in a, real, in a leadership role today or Possibly in, in, in the near future, you want to take on that responsibility. And if I were you, this is the presentation or this is the talk you need to have before you take on those roles. So let's start this presentation by first defining what a leader or a boss is. A boss is a person who is in charge of a worker, a group, or an organization. This is typically people you think bosses is the person who tells you what to do each day, right? This is typically what we think when we think bosses. Now, bosses, really, do you think boss is like a supervisor, a disciplinarian, someone who runs the show? Do you think they're demanding? See, people who are bosses typically have a rap for being the people who are in charge, the people who dictate what we do, the people who make things happen in a business because they're the ones who, who get to make those things happen. They've got that, that title, but more importantly, they have that we'll call it influence in a business. And this is this is a big deal because many people use the word boss all the time, right? In my team, people call me boss. I, I don't really like it as much. You know, when somebody calls me boss, I don't like it. It's not, and I'll tell you why in just a minute, but boss isn't the, the type of term that I want because people think about a disciplinarian or people who's, you know, in charge of people. And it's kind of a different thing. So the truth about being a boss, here's the truth. Number one, you really don't want to be a boss. I, just like I mentioned, I don't want people to call me a boss. I don't believe bosses are the things we should strive to be. You see, bosses has a negative connotation. I think people say that today. And not to get into somewhat of a politically correct world or some sort of snowflake world, if you will. I just want you to know, I don't, I don't think boss is the correct term in a role that may have people who are being, we'll call it guided, mentored, disciplined, whatever you want to call it. This isn't necessarily to say that you don't want to, um, how do I put it? You don't want to have the title or the role of a boss. You just don't necessarily need to have that. Okay, so, so bosses usually show up late, leave early, demand respect, dictate the work to be done. Now I say that because this is what I've seen. I don't know about you guys, you wanna comment in here, but typically when somebody's the boss, they do what they want. They go when they want, they come when they want, they demand things to do, be done. And bosses have a bad rap for this because they, they typically, you know, when I, I know a lot of people in business, I know a lot of people who run companies, I know a lot of people who are leaders in an organization and all of them have their different forms of, of we'll call it bossing. And I think, I think when people think the boss, they think, for an example, well, the boss leaves early on Friday or, you know, the boss comes in late um, or the boss said we need to do it. So just shut up and do it. <laughs> and, and if you disagree with me, please comment in the comments. But I think that's what people think about bosses. Like bosses get to do what they want to do. And this in itself is, is a very is the very reason why you don't want to be a boss. It's the very reason because 
if you think about it, you shouldn't strive to be the guy who shows up later, the girl who shows up late, or the person that just leaves earlier, tells you what to do, but doesn't really do it. They just gets their own schedule. This is a hard deal because you shouldn't strive to be a boss if that's the boss you want to be. Get it? If that's the boss you want to be, that's not who you should strive to be. You should strive to be a leader. There's a difference between a boss and a leader. This is important to, to really draw a line in the sand and say, I want to be a leader. I don't want to be a boss. I want to be a leader. I don't want to be a boss. Leaders, you know, leaders by definition is somebody who has the influence of other, uh, over people. And leaders, they're a little different than bosses because a boss, again, is somebody who typically you see as somebody who's an authoritarian person. It's somebody who dictates things. It's somebody who, who does what they want. Who's somebody who believes that they're in charge. You see, when you have this false belief of leadership, that means you probably believe you're a boss. And bosses don't, don't really get much done. They're not very productive. They don't really get the workforce to deliver. I'm telling you that now. Maybe you have a definition of a boss that's different than mine, and that's okay. Maybe your definition is somewhat like this. Leaders are those who influence others to pursue their potential in a team setting. See, bosses demand, dictate, lead, or, or command, rather, things to get done. Leaders influence others to pursue their potential in a team setting. Sounds different, right? I, a, a boss says, get this done. A leader says, you can get this done. You see that? A boss says, get this done. A leader says, you can get this done. Why? These are potential versus demand or commands. And you want to chase potential. You don't want to chase you know, demands. These, these are things that we align with. You know, you don't go to your children and say, clean their room because I said so, right? Leaders say, hey, I know you can clean your room. It's something you need to do so that people will respect you when they come over and they'll think that you're a clean and tidy person and they'll not have bad and negative thoughts about you. See, that's that's potential exposure versus get your room clean because I said so. See, many people go through life demanding things because they're the boss. It's not how it works. You you'll you all know this because in families today, and it's it's starting to change, but for many years, you know, fathers were 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 demanders, they were the bosses of the home, they demanded what needs to be done. They said all of the things that needed to be done and they commanded it to happen. And today's leadership style in parenting needs to switch to activating potential, you know, influencing the decisions rather than dictating decisions. These are important things in building teams and building families, building relationships and building culture. So leaders show up early. They stay late. late. They practice humility. They allow teams to work on their skill sets. Now, let me, let me add this because this is important. A leader typically is going to be the person who shows up early and stays late, not necessarily because that's the role, but that's because they feel obligated to do so. Let me say that again. They feel obligated to do so. This is a hard thing to swallow because bosses show up when they want, leaders show up when they need to. See that? Bosses show up when they want, leaders show up when they need to. And it just so happens that leaders need to show up a lot. <laughs> see leaders got to show up early they got to stay late you know this, this, there's got to be some grace there obviously you're going to get to leave early sometimes you get to stay you don't have to stay late every day but know this that in a leadership role your job is not to lead just people it's to influence people it's to guide people it's to mentor people it's to create and expose potential in people and because you do those things, what happens is you must be accountable to the people you lead. And this is really what it comes down to. Leaders hold themselves accountable to the team. You see, if, if a, a leader doesn't show up early and expects everyone else to show up early, what you're doing is you're being a boss. But if a leader shows up early and expects his team to show up early, what you're doing is you're being a leader. You're influencing, you're showing what needs to be done. You see, I believe that Great leaders do things more for their teams than they do for themselves. I believe they're more accountable to the people that they count on than the other way around. Let me say that again. I believe they're more accountable to the people they count on than the other way around. So when I show up every morning to my business, I want to show up to be accountable to my team. You see, you know, for many years, in my early years, I used to believe that I was the boss and I would give people keys to the office and say, just show up and I'll be there at three o'clock or whatever time I would show up. 
I would leave early. I would stay sometimes if I wanted to. I would do things sometimes. I would never really deliver on the promises to my employees or my teams. I was really just a bad boss, right? I was a boss though, because I wrote the checks and I paid the bills and I delivered the, the, the supplies, but I never really showed up for them. I was just showing up because it was my duty or my obligation um, in hopes that I would generate revenue that I could put in my pocket and go do things that I wanted. You see, I did that for many years. And when I had a leader shift, if you will, in my mind was probably around 2013, 2014, where I went almost financially bankrupt. And I realized that the only way that I could do better in building a business that could really sustain anything and building it into its own economy was really having a team. And I knew that team that I had at that time wasn't the right team. I had to clean up the, the mess that I had made and I had to get rid of the people that I had dictated to do things. And I wanted to find people that I could influence to do things. And so I started to work really hard to influence people through my actions rather than my words. I started to step up and be the leader that my team needed. I showed up late. I stayed early or the other way around. <laughs> I showed up early and I stayed late. There you go. Sorry. That was funny. Huh? Somebody didn't catch that. I would get and deliver at the highest levels each and every day. And today I still do that. That, that was what, seven, eight years ago. Today, I show up earlier than most people show up in the office. Now, I'm not saying I'm doing that to prove a point. I just do. I'm usually at the office by 8 a.m. Our offices don't open until 9, sometimes 7.30, depending on the day. I usually stay in my office working till 6 or 7. Typically, that's when, you know, everybody's gone for the day, but I really enjoy that. And I'll work till 10 if I had to, if I have something that's really important. I deliver to my team every day, meaning I put the things that I need to do on hold some days so that I can help them get what they need to get done. I deliver and I deliver and I deliver to my team because I hold myself more accountable to them than they should to me. Because I believe if they see me influenced by them, they would be influenced by me. It's a reciprocity. So leaders show up for their team, not the other way around, as I mentioned. Leaders create the culture for the team. This is important. See, bosses dictate a culture. They say, hey, we are, you know, we're the best. You know, bosses go in and they read the mission statement and say, we're the best. Yeah, we're the best. Yeah, you know, like they... They pump you up and they just say what it's supposed to be. Whereas opposed to a leader creates the culture by actions. See, when you know you're the best, it's because you have confidence that you are the best. And the way you build confidence is through influence. The way you build influence is through actions, and not words. And influence is really the definition of how you get leadership in an organization. You see, people lead me. I don't lead them. See, creating leaders is a culture that you need to do or create in your business, in your organization, your church, your home. All of these things tie together. So leaders create the culture for the team. So leaders deliver each day. As I mentioned, I deliver every day. And this isn't, again, just to brag about what I do, but I know this works. I know that if I show up every day, my team shows up every day. I know that. I know that if I show up and I deliver, they'll deliver. But if I don't show up, you know, there's a statement, when the cat's away, the mice will play, which means... The cat, once they leave the house, man, that cat takes off, all the mice come out and they do everything, right? They take the cheese, if you will. And our team is as good as that leader is, right? Yeah, and, and there's a comment here. They're more of a do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. That's what leaders, the difference between a boss and a leader is. So if you thought being a boss was cool, I'm here to tell you it's not. You see, if you thought you were going to be a boss one day, you're going to be in charge one day. I'm here to tell you, this is not the fact. And you don't want to be a boss. You want to be a leader. You want to strive to set the standard in your organization by doing the things like showing up early, getting the job done, delivering at the highest levels. This is an important part of being the leader. So being a leader to your team is really what a real boss does. Now, I know maybe I didn't tell you anything you didn't know, but I maybe referenced some things that really were different to you. Because when I thought about accountability today, because this really is the, 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 the mantra for me right now, is holding myself accountable to the things that I want to accomplish and to the people that matter the most to me. You know, I continue to step up and I continue to push at the world. And those commitments that I make must be backed up with actions and those actions must be backed up with people and those people must be backing me up. I can't do it alone. I can't push alone. A leader is got a team and a boss. It's a lonely place. 
it's you have to pay people to show up a boss and and by the way in, in organizations even mine some people are only showing up because they get paid you know i know that and those aren't team players those are people that need to go be gone and we work real hard in every organization that i own or operate or work with to get rid of those people right they get they show up because they get paid you see i i believe that if you show up you should get paid but i don't think you should show up to get paid <laughs> does that make sense because one in one one statement implies that you show up because you want to and one shows up you're 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 showing up because you have to there's a difference for me and for everyone in this organization that i run but more importantly everybody in organizations around the world there are many people who absolutely hate what they do and hate who they work for and what they're standing for and so what they do is they just show up to get paid as opposed to getting paid to show up and this is this is a big big challenge in the world today it's a big challenge where the workforce today is entitled to be compensated for things that they may not or may or may not do, as opposed to influencing people to produce towards their potential and being compensated for that and then working in a direction that could eventually compensate them more and more each and every day. This is a very big mind shift that I had to have many years ago, and I think that many of you will have to have it as well. If you want to be a leader, you want to be the boss, the real boss in the business, then you must start working and striving to have better actions towards the things that you want to be accomplished, more importantly, towards the people that you want to lead. Your actions speak, not your words. Telling me you're going to get something done and actually getting it done are totally different. And many people just talk and they don't execute. Many people don't deliver. Many people don't give. And a lot of that has to do if they have a boss or they have a leader. If they have a boss, they don't deliver. If they have a leader, they deliver. And it depends on their interpretations of all these things. So does anybody have any questions? Any questions or want to give me some comments that we can talk about here? Let's see here. And we got a good group on here. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna call some people out of it. I got somebody dialing in. Good job. And we got some good people on here today. Dialing and everything. I love that though. The more they there do as I say, not as I do kind of mentality. Good morning, everybody. Here's some any, any questions or anything y'all want to make comments here. Well, I think about this or while I wait to see if any comments or questions come through. I want you to know that when I thought about this presentation today, I knew it was going to be short, but what I really wanted to impact you on or to imply towards you is that if if we were if we were trying to build a company together, I wouldn't want to be your boss. I'd want to be your leader. And if we were working together in an organization like a church, I wouldn't want to be the boss. I would want to be the leader. I want to influence you to reach your potential. I don't want to just force you to do something you don't want to do. And I think that I led the opposite, which is as a boss for many years. And I think many leaders or many bosses lead that way today. I think you'll go to many companies today where bosses will just have to you know, brutally dictate what needs to happen as opposed to influencing the actions that could happen. And I don't want to live in an organization that has those things because then you won't want to be there for a long time. I want, I want people around for a long time because I'm going to be around for a long time. And I think about every day, the things that linger upon my mind each morning as I approach the office, as I approach my desk is, is what I'm doing going to make the people around me better or worse? And I always think about the people that I have the influence over, the people that will benefit from my success and that will be hurt by my failures. You see, I think about that all the time. And yeah, maybe they don't think about me and that's the problem, right? Sometimes that, that's, that's actually a really big problem today is that, you see, I can't care about somebody's potential or success more than they can care about mine. See, I always tell people I want to build teams that support my success. I want to build a team that supports my success because in, in turn, my success becomes theirs. Because if I do well, they do well. And that's what true leadership is. It's where I want to do good for them and they want to do good for me. Because if we do it, we do it together. When you don't have that type of organization, when people don't want to get better because it's all about them or when they don't feel that they're influence or they're influenced in the business enough, then they need to exit. And that's when the difference between having bosses and leaders comes into play. So a boss can keep those around and a leader will get rid of those pretty quickly because they can't align with the same beliefs. So 
if you want to connect with me, if you have questions or need something, please connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. These videos do go up on YouTube, by the way. Um, we have upcoming events. In fact, right now, if you're interested, we have a 30-day shift where I break down the two main components of an economy, which is your health and your wealth, and how you can take charge and control of those. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most extensive, time-intensive things I've ever done. And it's something that I wanted to do because I knew that the people that were engaged and that wanted to step up and control and build the things that they love in life and enjoy life at a higher level, I knew they'd commit. And we have a lot of people who have committed to this thing, and I would love for you to commit as well. You can go to davidapettis.com and click on the events tab. You would see the 30-day life shift. It just started yesterday, so you're only a day in, and it's not really that far because we're giving everybody till Wednesday to do before pictures, measurements, assessments, things that would really test, test and challenge them because this is an important part of creating and building your own economy. So if you're interested, please join me, davidapettis.com. Stop sharing real quick so I can talk to you guys. So I have uh, been blessed and honored to be your host for the last few weeks, and I'm gonna continue to put these events on. If you have a topic or something that you would like for me to cover, in any of these events, please email me, david at davidapettis.com. Visit my website, send me a message. I'd love to produce a topic that I felt was, I could add value to if I could. I couldn't, I'll tell you. But if I can, I'd love to present this stuff to you. So I really appreciate you, respect you. Thank you for your time and your presence. I wish you nothing but health, wealth, success, but most importantly, freedom. You'll have a great and fantastic Tuesday. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.